Today, we are going over Konami's pedal board. $6,957 is roughly about how much this thing costs. And we're going to go over the prices of all the pedals, what they do, how they function within the pedal board. This was from an article that was put out on Guitar Magazine out of Japan. And by the way, this video is completely inspired by Uncle Yoshi. He does a great rig breakdown of this entire pedal board that's what inspired me to do this video i was like you know i want to talk about the prices and some more functionalities of the pedal maybe give a little bit more insight also in the article konami does offer details on how often she uses these pedals and what they're using i'm just going to talk about practical applications with these and the prices of these things. So the very first pedal we have here is Arc 3 Audio Routing Controller by Free, Free The Tone. Now Free The Tone is a company out of Japan and she uses a lot of pedals from this company. Also known as the brain of the pedal board because this is the pedal that activates a sequence of all the pedals that are above. So as we can see in this pedal board, there is a lot of boost pedals and a lot of those will be probably activated depending on the channel. Now, Uncle Yoshi said in his video and in that article that she doesn't use some of the boost pedals that often, but you could essentially set up these boost pedals to affect different parts of the tone. So again, about this arc pedal, as you can see in this picture, she has her clean tone, she has a crunch tone, she has her drive, she, I don't know what the heart one is for, uh, boost, maybe she says something in the article, let me know down below, and then we have a solo section, which is very common to have this kind of setup, this is very similar to a setup that I have in my Helix, which is all programmed out, but this pedal is very essential for this whole entire pedal board to operate. That is why it is the brain of this pedal board. Now, this pedal itself runs between $700 to $1,500 used online. You can't get it brand new as of right now. Maybe there's some stores in Japan that have it, but they're uh, prepping to release the ARC 4 very soon. I wonder if she'll upgrade to that. I don't think so. Normally when you're happy with the pedal, you keep it until it breaks. <laughs> I still have my Digitech pedals from when I was 16. Now that we talked about the brain of the pedal, let's go ahead and go to the top of the board where we have her guitar tech Daisuke here <laughs> covering up probably some power sources that are there underneath it that helps power all the pedals in the board. But uh, I'm not sure how much he costs, but I'm sure it's pretty expensive to probably have him on the payroll to make sure that this is all set up properly. I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't know. But Having a guitar tech for this pedal board is pretty essential to have, especially if there's a short circuit in the pedal at any time, any given moment, that guy has to run out there and make sure it's set up. Now he's been with her very, for a very long time. Okay, so we have another pedal from Free The Tone. Every pedal board should have something like, this is a gate pedal that helps control the noise of other pedals that might introduce more noise to the signal path from the guitar. Similar pedals to this one are known for kind of messing up your overall tone, but the higher end ones like this are known to keep your signal clean and produce a good tone. Also, this pedal can be used either for the reduction of noise or you can use it as a gate. In this case, she's using it to clean up any hissing or noise to her sound. A gate will cut off the sound completely. So if it hits a certain threshold of let's say negative 16 dB, it will automatically cut off the sound directly. But when she hits the string at a certain velocity, once it gets past that negative 16 dB, all her, her signal will kick back in. Now this next pedal, in my opinion, gives us the hard rock sound that we love from Konami. You can hear this a lot in her songs and this twang, and it didn't make sense until I actually looked this pedal up, and now I'm very interested in getting one of these things. So this is the Jan Ray Boost Overdrive pedal designed to recreate the punchy clear tone of the Blackface Fender amps from the 60s, which made me think about a bunch of songs by bandmate that have that fender tone and a lot of it has to do with this pedal in her rig often referred to the fender magic six sound the price ranges from $375 and if you get the really like early ones like the first editions they can run up to seven grand which is insane so I'm gonna assume maybe she paid around 1300 for this she looks like it looks like she has an older one on here but I'm not entirely sure next we have a Friedman amplification boost guitar effects pedal now it is very normal to have multiple different kinds of boost pedals because certain ones will cause coloration or some will 
will give you a nice clean sound and just boost the overall signal. So in this case, this one does do that overall clean sound, which is what I prefer for solos. And because I like to boost up that 2K range, which it looks like she does the same thing on her pedal board for this. And it's just the 2K range is like the pleasure for the ear holes. And this pedal runs $165. Then next up, we have the Pete Cornish OC1 compressor pedal, which is essential to have on any pedal board and is often ignored or not added by guitarists who are just starting. But man, this regulates the tone a lot. And what I mean by that is if you're playing something maybe a little bit more delicate, like a clean sound, which you have a lot of fluctuation between the frequencies, what it does is let's say we set this pedal at negative 7 dB, which means you want the volume to be at negative 7. And let me back up for a second. In the audio world, when you go past zero, that's way too obnoxiously loud, all right? You don't want to be past zero, you'll be bleeding. That's where you get distortion and stuff out of your speakers. Everything falls under the negative. So let's say negative seven, okay, in this case. We don't want it, we want the sound to stay somewhere near negative seven. So what the compressor does is if for some reason I go to negative three, because that would be higher than negative seven, it'll try to bring it back around the negative seven range. Now, let's say we go to negative 14, it'll pull up around the negative seven range. And that's what a compressor does. It just keeps the sound consistent. If you go too hard though, it'll go to negative seven and stay there and it'll suck the feel out of the guitar. And that's why you wanna be very careful with the compressor. You wanna aim for the negative seven. The sweet spot is to have it like roughly bring the sound around the negative seven and that's the way you wanna marry the two sounds. Now, what's amazing about this pedal though, is you can do the complete compression to that negative seven if you want to, which I would probably do because there's a blend pedal on here. Sometimes they don't have blend pedals. And what that means is you can have the straight compressed sound and then you can have your nice organic sound underneath. So you blend those two singles together and you just get a happy marriage right there. And now this style of compression, I do a lot in mixing and it's very crucial to like all my mixes that I do for music. So it's really cool to have a lot of the features that I'd use in a normal compressor on my computer, on a pedal, really awesome. And this pedal runs about $549. All right, here's where we talk about pedals I'm a little bit more familiar with. We have the Digitech Drop Pedal, and I use this to this day, still, for live shows all the time, because what we do with this pedal is we'll have a guitar setup and standard tuning, and we fluctuate tunings throughout the set. Instead of having five guitars, I only bring two guitars. So for example, I have a standard tuning guitar and then I'll have a drop D guitar. And if I need to play a song in drop C, I can set this thing on two and it'll drop it a whole step. So each notch on here drops your guitar by a half step. If I have my standard tuning, um, guitar and I need to play a half step song, bam, I just go down one notch. And it does it very cleanly. It does it really well. And it appears to me on this pedal board that Konami has, she has two of them there. It looks like she has one set up to drop half steps. I've seen her with I think a max of two guitars when she plays live. So probably when she wants to hit that half step tuning for certain songs, she probably activates that drop pedal. Let me know if she says something about that in an article. I didn't catch it. I read through it really fast. But she also has another one that's set up for just an effect kind of vibe because you can set it up where you have it just drop the overall tuning of the guitar or you can turn it on for an effect sound and you just press it and it'll drop a note for you instantaneously. And these pedals run about $209 a piece, which is crazy because when I bought one of these, it was like... $80, <laughs> which is just a saying that they're 200 each now. Now, the next pedal we have is the H9 Eventide pedal. I absolutely love this pedal, and I'm pretty sure Konami is using the Eventide H9 Max Harmonizer pedal version of this pedal. I said the word pedal a lot, and <laughs> what I mean is that this thing comes in three different versions. If Depending on the version you get is how many effects that you get on the pedal. So on the Max, you get all the Eventide pedals, which she has one of them on here. She has the Time Factor pedal, which is hilarious because you can get the Time Factor settings all on. This H9 has all the Eventide pedals, and then you can add more Eventide pedals on this Eventide H9 harmonizer. 
but she's using it for the reverb sound, so she's using it as a reverb version, which they do have an even tied reverb pedal. I can't remember the name of it. Let me know in the chat if you remember. She's using it for its spring reverb sound specifically, which is something that they are known for from back in the day. And I have a feeling she uses this in tandem with the delay pedals. And this pedal can run anywhere between $600 to $800. Right now it's running for 600, it's dropped in price because they came out with a newer version of this where you can actually rotate better through the settings. And for me, I use this as a harmonizer pedal so I can do dual guitar solos and stuff without having another guitar player to do it. And it's one of the best sounds I've heard from a harmonizer pedal. I've tried other ones and it sounds good, but you hear like these digital artifacts. This one really sounds like there's another guitar playing with you, which is really fucking cool. Now we get to her delay pedals and I'm gonna stop real quick just to let you guys know that if you check the description down below, I have links to all these pedals, all the information about them if you're interested in any of these. Now we're gonna start off with another Free the Tone pedal. She's a huge fan of this uh, company and Honestly, Free the Tone, why are you not sponsoring Konami yet? You, I was looking at their artist list and I was for sure I was going to see her on there and she isn't. So make that happen, Free the Tone. She's, she's using a lot of your pedals. And then we have the Eventide Time Factor pedal, which is an amazing sounding pedal. It's just like amazing quality overall. And now she uses these delays a lot. And one of the songs that it is very dominant in is Daydream. It's such a beautiful sound, right? But this runs $409 for this one. And then for the Eventide Time Factor, it's $345. I knew the Eventide pedal was expensive. But don't worry. We get to a cheaper pedal. One of the cheapest pedals on the board. But... As it says in the article, she doesn't really use it that much, but it's another boost pedal. We got the Bakery Choco Cornet EQ pedal, which is the cheapest pedal on her pedal board, costing just $52. So <laughs> $52. I wonder if she got it just because this is a cute pedal. It appears from looking at her pedal board, though, the EQ specifically used for the delay pedals at times, if she wants to add it to it, the way that I can see the routing. But like I said in the article, she says she doesn't really use it that often. So maybe it's just there in case she wants to use it. In case you want to mess with your sound a little bit. It's always fun to mess with new sounds with Dallin and EQing can do that. And then we have another boost pedal right here by Exotica. We have the EP booster pedal and this one is running about $130. Again, she says she doesn't use these as often, but it's there for tone changes when she needs it. We got the perfect baby volume hybrid pedal that costs her around $355. I'm like, God damn, for a volume pedal, this is crazy. But it's because it has crazy innovative technology in it that doesn't fuck with your sound all right <laughs> this is just a volume pedal which controls how loud the guitar signal is going into her pedal board what makes this pedal special is that when you lower or raise the volume it maintains a clean signal without adding any coloration and that's why this pedal is so important 355 dollars is wild but you know what you need a nice smooth volume pedal even on my helix sometimes my volume pedal doesn't work as well so maybe you do need something like this but it looks like it has a bunch of other features that I didn't look into it that are on the side here and I believe it has a really good MIDI controller on it also but that's a video for another day we can talk about MIDI controlling because as you've seen during her live shows the guitar tech can control the pedals. Now this next pedal I found fascinating I didn't even realize that this was a Steve Vai signature Morley Wah pedal. I didn't know he had a signature pedal. It's called the Morley Bad Horsey 2 Contour Wah pedal. Contour is just referring to the audio signal. I forgot what contour is in the audio world. I'll post an image somewhere. But anyways, this pedal runs around about $200, okay? This is a pedal to engage in that wah sound, that wah, 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 wah. Yeah, you know what I mean. She uses it a lot in solos. But the thing that makes this pedal cool is that you don't have to click anything to turn it on because most traditional wah pedals, you have to click stuff to turn it on. You just press on it and it automatically activates. And then when it goes back to its position, it shuts off. This one has a way to mess with the contour frequency and it has its own level on it. 
but she has that capability to turn that on and off. It just gives you further manipulation of your overall wah sounds. Now we get to the less glamorous pedals, all right? We have the Pitch Black X tuner, which um, sometimes these tuners have a little bit of a signal boost in the front of the chain, so you can make sure that the signal makes it through all these cables here on the pedal board. It is important to have a buffer in the beginning and a buffer at the end, and a lot of these pedals will have them built in. The Pitch Black X does have have that buffer built in that helps boost that signal through the entire board you need that to keep the signal clean but she has so many pedals on here that do an excellent job at doing that because they're very high-end pedals most of the high-end pedals have that but anyways back to the tuner it tunes things that's what it does it tunes things it's a hundred bucks and then we have the PT3D power supply by Free the Tone. This ensures that all of the voltage and currents coming from the power source are clean and properly distributed to your pedals. This is very necessary for a pedal board to make sure each pedal receives the right amount of power. Then she has the LB2 loop pedal by Free the Tone also. This just gives her more options to loop some of these other pedals to have different circuitry. If you look at the brain of the pedal, she has six different settings set up. So you do need another looper on there to loop the pedals back and get different combinations of pedals. And that's what this thing does. And that's what it helps with. But the technology in this is really good and keeps the signal clean and flowing just like the rest of the pedals on her board. And both of these pedals together run about 250 bucks. All right, so we are at $5,957, and I added on another 1000 because you have the whole mounting system, you have all the cables, she probably has some help resoldering the cables, putting it together, who knows how much that costs, so I just threw out another 1000 to make it. The overall cost, about $6,957.88 is probably the cost of this pedal board, so if you want to get Konami sound, this is how much this is going to cost. Of course, don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. You can get a lot of these pedals digitally. As a guitarist, we like to tinker, some of us do, and she's definitely... A sound engineer at this point like having all of these pedals that's essentially what she's doing she's creating her own sound designing her own sound and that's very admirable i love it when guitars get involved in their tone and that's why she has such a unique tone herself as compared to other guitars where they just go with the basics and you get the run-of-the-mill sound the reason why we get a unique sound is because of all this honestly she's putting in the work to make sure she has a sound that's unique to her that fits her playing style the way she plays and that's really awesome i love to see guitarists mess with these kind of things and honestly it has inspired me to pull out my pedal board that i built and keep tinkering with it because the Helix sucked the creativity out of it when it comes to designing your own sound. But with the Helix, it's good for cover band situations. And that's what I use it mainly. For my custom sound, I use my own pedal board. Because it's so much more fun to have the knobs and turn everything and get it all set up. But anyways, guys, if you want to check out more information on all these pedals, I have links to every single one down below in the description if you want to research more about it. If you like this style of video, let me know down below. This is my first time doing anything like this. And shout out again to Uncle Yoshi for inspiring this video. Thank you. It was awesome watching yours. Make sure you go watch his right after this. It's right here if you want to see it. See you guys in the next one. See you!